What's going on, smart people? You read the title. Today we're going to be taking another quiz, and it's from allthetests.com. I think one of the last quizzes we took on here was from here, and I think it was kind of fun. But this one's going to test our knowledge of quantum physics. Uh, why is it quantum physics again and not like classical mechanics? Because they don't make those. No one cares about classical mechanics, apparently. They're not going to test us on it. So we're going to have to settle for quantum. And uh, we're going to see if this prepares all of us for like the physics GRE and stuff like this. I'm hoping that it will. Anyways, let's get started. Hello, this quiz will test your knowledge of quantum physics. I don't expect most of you to pass. Uh, we must... Let's start with question, question one. What must we do to make time travel possible? Okay, off to a good start. We have to reach a speed of 100,000 kilometers per hour. We have, we have to crook the space-time. We have to reach 200,000 kilometers per hour, 300 kilometers per hour, or we have to twist the space. So this is kind of a trick, tricky thing because part of me thinks, can't tell if they think that the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per hour when it's roughly 300,000 kilometers per second, right? Because it's 300 million meters per second. Yeah, that makes sense. So assuming that that's not a typo, and they don't mean per second, now we just have to do, we have to interpret crooking the space-time versus twisting the space-time. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm gonna twist the space-time. That's what we're gonna do. What... <laughs> What cannot we measure in a particle at the same... This is a very high quality quiz. What cannot we measure in a particle at the same time? The position and the size, the volume and the size, the speed and the surface area, all of the above, and the position and the speed. I don't think that this quiz was made by a physics student because if you're talking about the uncertainty principle, who doesn't use position and momentum? I mean, I guess you can kind of you could do speed if you wanted to, but you don't. <laughs> okay, but uh, it's gonna be that one. I'm assuming, right? What what quantum operators? What other quantum operators wouldn't commute? I'm gonna have to say I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure volume commutes with size. Which particle does not have? Which particle does not have the wave-particle duality? All of the particles, every single one of them. The proton, no particle. The electron, the tau neutrino. So, I guess that would just be the proton. I don't know if that's accurate though. I feel like all of them can exhibit uh, some kind of wave-like nature. I feel like the, the narrowness of the wave function like goes exponentially up. It starts to look like a delta function, wave function, but more complicated the system you have. But let's let's go with the proton. Oh, that's saying which particle does not have. So no particle does not have. I'm going to go with no no particle does not have the, the wave the particle wave duality. Which of these things does the neutrino apply to? Dark mass the equation e equals mc cubed, guys. We're talking about the less famous Einstein equation that doesn't make sense. The, the makeup of waves, the makeup of leptons, dark matter. Okay. Which of these things does the neutrino apply to? Well, the neutrino is a lepton, so it applies to the makeup of itself, I guess? The makeup of waves? Yeah. I I mean, I know that there's that one theory that suggests that it could be neutrinos since they're so weakly interacting, being the being what dark matter actually is. I don't know if that was ever uh, if that thought was ever closed. I don't know. What is it? It's a it's a whip, right? I think that's the word for it. Okay, weakly. Well, no, it can't be a whip because it's not. Maybe it could be. When I think of massive, so WIMP is weakly interacting massive particle. When I think of massive, I think of like big, but that could just mean something that has mass. But anyways, which is the weakest power of the fundamental powers? 
the electromagnetic power, the strong power, weak power, the gravity, <laughs> the, ce the centripetal force. Wait, so at first I, I, th they said power, so I was like, maybe it's something that's lost in translation, maybe this person doesn't, isn't, their first language might not be English, it's fine, I know what they're trying to say, right? F powers, I'm substituting in force, but they know force. It just said centripetal force. Well, they said centripetal force. Whatever. Gravity. <clears throat> what is the consequence of Einstein's formula E equals mc squared? Easy one. <laughs> how the universe was born. The conversion of mass into energy. The Big Bang. How we can travel faster than the speed of light. How we can travel the speed of light. Okay. So it's not these two. It's not this one. And it's not that one. Whenever you talk about like Einstein's uh, energy momentum relation, physicists get really like, I mm, don't like that. Whenever you say mass converting into energy, because really it's it's saying that they're just proportional to each other. I don't know. I don't know if converting is always the right word to use. I don't. I also don't really care as long as you know what I'm talking about. Whenever I say this stuff, that's what matters. Where can we find? Where can we find lines? in space-time diagrams, in speed-time diagrams, in speed-room diagrams, in pressure-time diagrams, nowhere, there's nothing symmetrical. Space-time diagrams, that's a thing. Talk about world lines. What do you know about world lines? Nothing. Which of these graphs cannot be the line of a human being when the space-time is not crooked? From top left to bottom right. Alright, so let's picture a space-time diagram. Uh, so a straight line up would be an object moving through time, but not moving through space. 45 degree line is just light traveling, right? It can travel 45 degrees, nothing can go farther than that. So I'm assuming it wouldn't be able to, so it's saying bottom left to top right, that's fine. Top left to bottom right top right to bottom left. I'm going to say top right to bottom left. I'm not sure on this one. Which particles does the weak power acts? <laughs> Which particle does the weak power acts? Between all neutrons, between all pr photons, between all leptons, and between all neutrinos. Uh, which is the weak power acts. So, weak interaction, we have stuff that's responsible for decay. So I'm gonna assume that that's still neutrons in this. How does the energy form in which a stars, in which a stars emits? Through fission, decay, fusion, electrons, nuclear decay. Fusion, yes. For what does the strongest fundamental force usually hold together? Mass and the center. The, the nucleons, matter in the center of the universe, the nucleus and the world. Probably that one. The nucleus and, and, the, and just the element of hydrogen, that's it. So strong force, let's say nucleons. What is the densest thing on Earth? The proton, the neutrino, the neutron, the electron. Or the sun's core? Well, the sun's core is not on Earth. And part of me thinks that they forgot that? Maybe? But also, the neutrons can be pretty dense. See, it's, it's, it can't be neutrinos, it can't be electrons, right? Because you treat them as if they're point particles. So how do you determine the density of something that has no volume? Protons, neutrons. Uh, let's see, I think protons are two ups and a down quark, roughly speaking, and a neutron is two downs and an up. I could be wrong on that. I'm acting like I know the relationship between what quarks are make, make up the particle and how dense it is. I'm going to say neutrons, because neutron stars are dense, and that's my thought process here. Score me. 
9 out of 12. So I missed 3. I wonder what 3 I missed. Oh, it doesn't even tell you. Oh, I can find out if I'm gay. <laughs> I, I wonder if that's like the recommended section. Wow, you passed. Congrats. As a Zen master once said, things derive their being and nature by mutual dependence and nothing in themselves. Thus, you and physics go along quite well together. Noise. Here is your score. 9 right, 74%. 10 right, 82.3%. So I got a 74. Well, guys, that is the Test Your Knowledge in Quantum Physics quiz. I probably should have looked at the questions before I took the quiz to see how badly they were written, but I think that actually made this a little bit funnier. Maybe it would have been a little bit more boring if they were just like, hmm, what property of the spherical har harmonics makes stuff happen? So I guess it was still kind of fun. <laughs> that was really silly, though. Thank you guys for watching. Someone out there, get a hundred and post the score, post the answers. I want to know what three I got wrong, what three I got wrong. And uh, yeah, so comment in the comment section what you guys got, and I'll see you guys there.